Okay. Looks like I'm live. I think. Can't tell yet if I'm alive. Hold on. All right. Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope that I am live. I couldn't tell on my side. Oh, look at there. Um, I hope everyone's doing okay. I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. Um, I didn't do much. I just kind of sat around the house and enjoyed being home, <laughs> you know, and um, being with the family. And what did we do? My, my family went bike riding. And then I kind of just hung around the house, cleaned up a little bit. And I made some um, I made some yogurt and then I made some bread. So just kind of hung around a little bit. So, hi, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> so guys, really quickly, I was going to do my last live. I told you guys that I was going to do the unnecessary, necessary, like crochet gadgets and things, but I had a few questions about, you know, um, I wish I would have picked up her name, but they had, she had asked about, um, crocheting and how it affects your hands and things like that and arthritis. And so another person underneath a comment, she res she responded that furl crochet hooks were a really good way of helping for like arthritis and things. So I wanted to get one of those. So I'm waiting for that hook to come in the mail. I want to use it. And then I want to do it all as a part of the unnecessary necessary and see if it actually helps with, you know, carpal tunnel or things like that. So um, I'm doing well, <laughs> That's, I'm doing real well. It's a, it's a nice day here today. It's not raining, it's really pretty out. So you know, I'm from Florida. So today, instead of me doing that video, the unnecessary, necessary of crocheting, I'm gonna do a get to know you tag. So a long time ago, when I first started crocheting, a lady by the name of Happy Knits, that's her crochet channel. I don't even know if she still does crochet like pod podcasts, but she really does more knitting than crocheting. And she gave me this tag and I never did it because at that time I really wasn't putting myself like on camera. So I was really just trying to teach the tutorials and things. So I went back to see if I could find that tag and I couldn't find all the information. But then um, Triple C and Joe Show, She's a crocheter who I started following on Instagram. I noticed that she had done a tag. So I was like, yeah, that's really good. So I'm going to take her tag information and then I'm going to um, I'm going to do those questions. So if you have any questions as I'm going along with these, leave them in the comment section. If I don't answer everything that you have um, thought about or had questions about, leave that to you. I'll kind of answer those questions as well. Thank you so much, Marina. I love teaching. It's not anything that I was taught how to do. I just wanted to show people what I know, and that's kind of the way I teach. Hi. It says, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the tag and, and answer some questions. And like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them. And let me know, too, if you guys can't hear me, because I don't have a um, an external mic. I'm just using the mic that's on my laptop and sometimes the sound is lower. So if you can't hear me, just let me know and I'll speak up. Okay. For a crochet handbag. A, what kind of crochet handbag? I have um, a couple of crochet handbags on my channel. Um, so let me know what kind you want. Hi, good morning, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, great. You can hear me. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ask some, ask Ask and answer some of these questions that I have here. So the first thing is my channel name is Ossel Ann. My name is Felicia. So Ossel Ann is like a nickname, basically where my, my nickname is Leisha and I kind of spelt it backwards to kind of create my own little brand. So Ossel Ann is the brand, but I'm Felicia, the crocheter behind that. Okay, so anywhere that you, you know, also land is going to be here on YouTube, it's going to be on Instagram, it's going to be on my website. So pretty much that's kind of the branding for crocheting. And the thing about it is I didn't ever do like Cro Australian crochets because at the time when I started doing my videos, I also love gardening. So I was really torn between do I want to put out gardening and plant videos or do I want to put out crocheting videos? And honestly, 
I'm still torn, guys, because I do really well. Um, I get a lot of good feedback when I put out my plant videos, and I get a lot of feedback when I do my crochet videos. And so it's kind of like, do I want to split them, split the channel, and do two different ones? I've thought about it, but I don't really know. You know what I mean? So I feel like if you guys get to know who I am, then you'll just search me, and you'll know that you'll either find something about a plant or you'll find something about crocheting, because those are the things that I really am passionate about and I love sharing about, you know? Thank you, Fawn. I really appreciate that comment. I really do. Okay, so how long have I been crocheting? That's that's a telling question because then I have to tell you my age. Um, I've been crocheting for about 20 years, but I've only been teaching crocheting for about three and a half, four years. So I learned while I was in college. I knew enough just to make myself like little blankets and things that I made everyone I know a blanket back then. And then about three years ago, I, I did my first crochet tutorial and it just kind of grew from there. So now what I like to do is learn, create it, and then share it. So that's kind of what the mantra of, of my channel is and what I kind of like to do. So if I learn something, I think it's easy enough for me to teach it. I will teach it and then I'll share it, you know? Wow, that's 12 Afghans. Wow, you've been busy. You've been busy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what um, the crocheting, how long I've been crocheting for about 20 years or so, but really focused for about three and a half years. Who taught me how to crochet? So my best friend in college, her mother used to crochet. So she taught me the beginning part of crocheting. Like we made a granny square blanket. So she would get me started. Like I made like three or four blankets in college, but she would always get me started. You know what I mean? Like she would make the be beginning crown and then I would just work around and around and around. So really I would say her or her mother taught me how to crochet. And then I came on YouTube back before it was anything like it is today. And I learned through a guy named Mikey Snell. I think it was Mikey Snell but he's now over the crochet crowd. So I'm pretty sure if you're a crocheter at all or really into the craft, you'll see, you've seen some of his videos, but I watched him way back when he was just one guy, one camera. This was way before the crochet crowd and all that stuff. So he kind of got me into crocheting. So it's my college roommate and Mikey. That's who I'm gonna give the credit to, okay? Um, my favorite hook size. My favorite hook size is really, um, I like like a size eight millimeter crochet hook. Um, 5.5 is good for making dishcloths and things like that. But when I'm making blankets, chunky yarn, I like to use like an eight to 10. So I don't know if I have a favorite size so much. I just like to use whatever works to get the job that I'm trying to get done completed, you know? So, oh, see, so you're in the right space because I love crocheting and I love plants. <laughs> Yeah, the crochet crowd. He's really, I mean, he's just really good. He puts out a lot of a lot of good tutorials. And they're quicker, but that's where I learned. And back when he was teaching, you know, many, many, many years ago, he was, it was a little bit slower, I think. So I liked him. My favorite yarn. So my favorite yarn is the Bernat Blanket yarn, which looks kind of like this. And then um, I learned this. I just recently got into this yarn. I wanted to bring this is um by Lions Brand Mandela. This you guys, this yarn is if you can get your hands on this, I found this on clearance at Walmart. But this is a hundred percent acrylic, but it's so soft. Like I'm making a baby blanket now, and I honestly I'm I can't wait to like go back out and buy more yarn. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this in a session in a second about my obsession with yarn, but I'm really trying not to buy yarn that I'm not gonna use but I love this yarn for like a lightweight yarn. And then as far as like an inexpensive yarn that has good drape, I like the cupcake yarn. Um, this is a good yarn too. So if you, it's a smaller weight yarn, it's like a three weight yarn, but if you're trying to get into premium yarns, this is a good kind of place to start. It's inexpensive. You get a lot of yarn in the skein and it has a really good drape. So this one, I like that. Um, and then as far as like my premium yarns go, it's going to be my knit crate. Anything I get from knit crate is usually pretty good. Okay. Those are my favorite yarns. Um, let's see. 
what's your favorite crochet pattern? So my favorite pattern is the pattern that I created. It's this for this particular shawl. This is what I call my Horizon Crochet Shawl. This is my favorite pattern. It's my, right now it's doing so well in my Etsy shop in terms of people purchasing it and I've gotten really good feedback. I don't really buy a lot of other crochet crocheters patterns so much because I'm a, I'm what you call a free, um, I think it's like a freestyle crocheter. I see something and then I try to recreate it. So I don't really buy a lot of patterns. I can read patterns, but I don't really crochet by patterns. But the one that I created for this project, um, it's gotten really good feedback and um, it's easy to follow. So I do like, I mean, I guess it's like a humble brag. I do like this one, you know? Yeah, see, I found it on clearance too at Walmart too. I hope that doesn't mean they're um, they're gonna get rid of this short. <laughs> I really like it. So I may have to go to Walmart and stock up despite my efforts to not buy yarn I don't need. Okay, so it says, who is my favorite crochet guru? guru? That is so hard because you know what guys, there's so many talented crocheters and so many talented creators. Um, it's hard to pick, but the two that I learned the most from, especially when I first started was, um, a, a crochet by the name of Melanie Ham. She has a YouTube channel as well. She's kind of flipped from crocheting to like quilting and sewing, but her crochet information has always been top notch. I've always learned a lot from her and, um, Su Suella, Ashley, her, her stuff is always very, very good. And she's also transitioned from crocheting to like um, dyeing and selling yarns, which I, I love that about the community that there's so many places that you can land. But as far as like when I first got started, I loved Melanie Ham and Suella. Those are like my favorite. Hey, good morning, Jan. How are you? Do you have a tutorial on how to make skirts? I have a tutorial on how to make a kid skirt, I think. Do I, did I make it as a tutorial? I don't know. If I don't have one, I'll put one up for sure. Because I, I found some really, um, I've done some in the past. I don't know if I did it as a tutorial. I have to check. I have over a hundred tutorials on my channel, guys. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I haven't done one before, but because I don't remember, it's probably a good sign for me to do another one, right? <laughs> so let me check back. If I do, I'll link it in this video. And if I don't, then just look for one in the next few months. I'll do one, okay? I, are you asking, Lisa, do I have a tutorial for this? And if you're asking about this, I do. There is a free tutorial on my channel. And then on my website, there is a, the, the pattern is actually written there too. It's just not in a PDF printable format. So if you're okay with going over to my website and reading the pattern there, you can. Or there's also a tutorial on my channel, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So those are my... Um, my favorite crochet gurus. And I also love Jonah. I think his name is Jonah Hands. He's like a young, um, he's got an 11 year old crocheter. And I don't follow him for anything other than I'm just in awe of how great he is and God's gift for him because he is so talented. I think this kid is like maybe 12 or 13 years old, maybe, maybe even 11, but he crochets like a mile a minute. He can make an entire Afghan in like two hours. It's just crazy the gifts that people receive and I love watching him not from a tutorial standpoint but absolutely just because he's so inspiring that at such a young age he's found his gift and he's really good at it so I love him and then also um the crochetpreneur I think her I think that's her name her name is Pam I like her for what she does for the space of crocheting you know what I mean like she's an entrepreneur and she's taken crochet and put it in that space. So if you're interested in making crochet like a business, I would recommend her as well. She's really figured out a way to like change the game in terms of how to market crocheting. So if you've got a gift for it, if whether you like to sell it, whether you like to write patterns, whether you like to, um, you know, make video tutorials, do website design, there's like a place for anyone pretty much in the crochet space, which I think is amazing. I mean, some people even, like I say, if you like to, to do the dyeing of the yarns and things, 
that's a, there's a space for that. And I feel like the crochetpreneur, Pam, she's done really well at getting that information to people. Like, how do you start, you know? So, and there's a lot of other women. So it's not like I'm just trying to, I just can't think of everyone. Um, and I love like the podcast space that a lot of crocheters have gone into too. So, I mean, it's just, it's just great. It's great. Um, what inspires, what, what, what am I inspired by? So I'm in, inspired by anything that's around me. You know what I mean? I could be anywhere and get inspired to create something. Um, fashion itself is inspiration. I could look at a magazine and say, oh, that would look really cool. I wonder how it would look crocheted. Um, and I love to see how crocheting is actually, you can find crocheting and knitting in a lot of um, fashion magazines. You know what I mean? It's kind of like someone took, you know, I don't know. I just like, I get inspired by everything around me. It's not just clean, cleanliness really inspires me too. like being in clean spaces. I can, I can think well, you know, um, what do you use for a stitch marker? A stitch marker. I use a stitch marker for a stitch marker. I, I mean, you can use anything though. You can use a paper clip. You, when I say a stitch marker, like if you're creating a project, so if you're new to crocheting, you may not understand what I'm saying. So if you're creating a project, a stitch marker is kind of going to keep you either A, can keep your garment together. It can tell you where you are, what row you're working. So this is what a stitch marker looks like. But in crocheting, you can use yarn as a stitch marker. Like I said, paper clip. You can use, um, man... You can use almost anything that can clip into, but I like stitch markers. They're not that expensive. You can get like a hundred for like three dollars. And I don't want to like I don't want to say it's not expensive because everyone's, you know, that's all relative. But if you can get your hands on some of these, and oftentimes when I do giveaways on my channel, I'll throw some of these in my giveaway um too, just because they're so handy. So for instance, like I'm working this blanket, right? And say I'm done for that, um, Say I'm done for this moment and I don't want it, I don't want to work anymore. So this is the loop that I'm working in. So what I would do is I'll take my stitch marker and I'll just slide it through the loop I'm working. And I will also slide it through the stitch I'm working. I'm trying to do this from this angle, it's weird. Like that. And then I'll just kind of clip it. And that allows me not to lose my place when I'm traveling around with my yarn. So I love using stitch markers just the way they're designed or for purposes like that. So I use my stitch, I use an actual stitch marker for my stitch marker. What is the highest price you paid for one skein of yarn? Um, the highest price I paid for one skein of yarn. The highest price I would pay for one skein of yarn is $24.99. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Um, that's with the Knit Crate program, right? So there's other programs out there, but programs like Knit Crate, they allow you to try premium yarns. The, the only thing is, is they send it to you in a monthly subscription box. So you don't really know what you're going to get every month. But being a yarny person that loves yarn, that doesn't bother me so much. So for $25, $24.99, that includes your shipping and everything. You get two, usually two skeins of yarn and you usually get two patterns and then they always have some like little goodie in the box with it. But this is premium yarn in a sense because it's nice, it's soft, it has great drape, you know, the colors, you can't find these in the stores. Oftentimes they're limited quantity. So, you know, you're going to have a one of a kind project. So that for me, $24.99 is well worth it because one skein of hand dyeing yarn or premium yarn can cost 40, 50 bucks, you know? So for me, especially like as a crocheter that can go into a store and spend money just because I'm in the store, $24.99 is not a bad thing. And I kind of like the idea of getting yarn every month as a surprise. Like, ooh, what is that, you know? So that's the most I would spend for a skein of yarn just because my funds don't go that way. You know what I mean? I wouldn't feel comfortable spending that much money on some yarn and then A, the project doesn't come out the way I want it to or, you know, I for me, I, it's just not worth it to spend that much money on yarn. If 
I don't know for 100% it's going to come out exactly the way I want it to come out, you know? What is the ladder for? Oh, what is the pattern for this? Or the this is on my channel. Actually, this is my number one watched video on my channel. So this is uh if you look up, what is it called? Hold on. Let me look up the name of that video for you. If you if you type in also in crochet blanket, this is gonna come up. This one's gonna come up. Um, just because it's gotten so many views but let me hold on someone asked me what the pattern was for this blanket so that's what I was looking for let me tell you okay so if you look can you can you see that I don't even know if you can see that it's got the little boy on the thumbnail that's my son <laughs> Uh, hey, Meek, good morning. How are you? I miss you so much. <laughs> um, it's called Easy Crochet Blankets. Easy Crochet Blanket for Beginners. That's this pattern here. If that's what you're, if you're asking that, that's what I'm, that's if not, let me know. Yeah, that's my, that, this blanket, he still uses this. He's just letting me borrow it for my lives. <laughs> He's letting me borrow it from my life. So yeah, that's this one. Easy blanket, easy crochet blanket for beginners. I used, um, I think a 12 millimeter crochet hook for this one. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, so, so $24.99 for the, for the skein of yarn. And, and like I say, really you're getting two skeins for that price. So knit crate is where I would start. And um, if you're interested, not a video sponsored by them, but I only talk to you guys about stuff that I like, or I'll tell you something about stuff that I do not like, but I'll say that I don't like it. You know what I mean? So Nick Crate, and I'll put the information about that. Oh, <laughs> my director came in. He told me to look up, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, Nick Crate. And I'll put the information for Nick Crate down in the description box if you're interested in that, okay? How many times have you done one project before you got it right? One, let's see. I would say like four times. After the, about the fourth time, if I don't have it, I'm either gonna change the project into something different or I'm gonna put it down and just frog it out and move on because I just don't have the time y'all to keep doing something over and over and over again. I am dedicated to wanting to get something done, but I'm not that dedicated. So. For, for now, okay, let me say this real. If I've gotten it down where like it's almost done and I'm just at a point in the project that doesn't make sense, I'll keep going until I figure it out. Maybe. <laughs> but if it's something that I can change into something else, which I have something like that on my channel too, where I just couldn't get it right, I will switch that project into something else with the quickness. That's just, and the only thing about that is I do a lot of my things because I have you guys in mind and I want to show you. So it gets frustrating from that perspective because then if I've created something completely different, I can't show you. So it's a work, it becomes a, becomes a project for me. I can get it finished, but then I can't really share it. You know what I mean? I can't show you, share with you the steps. That's the only down, downside to me just making something different, kind of like changing the whole thing up. But So I do try to give it four or five chances, but then after that, me and the yarn, me and the pattern, we, be, we come to understanding that, nope, <laughs> we're not gonna be able to do that. So we just move on, you know? Oh. Okay, do you know how to read patterns? So let's say yes or no. I know how to read patterns. I know what it means. And if I don't know something about a pattern, I will go look it up and figure it out. Um, but I don't typically use patterns. I kind of said that earlier, just because I'm more visual when it comes to crocheting. So um, once I kind of get the concept down by watching, then for it. But um, I can read a pattern, but that's not typically how I crochet. 
you know? So, and it's kind of frustrating too, because everyone writes differently. So if you ever buy um, a pattern from somebody, especially like through Etsy or Rival or wherever, leave good feedback. Cause oftentimes they, um, the pattern writer is just the person at home that wants to share with you. And if they could, if you kept, if you have good feedback, like when I say good feedback, it's not that this pattern sucks and let it be, but just like, I didn't understand your transition between row one and row two. What did you mean? I feel like that kind of stuff can help the person that's writing the pattern, you know, get a better understanding on how to present the pattern. You know what I mean? So we're just people too, in most cases, unless you bought the pattern from like a store, but if you're buying it from like an Etsy shop or rivalry or something like that then there's just a person and they would love I mean for me I would love the feedback you know especially if it's done in a positive way it's not always what you say but it's how you say it so and that's just in everything so if you're if you get a pattern that doesn't make a lot of sense leave the feedback you know what I mean it's not like I want my money back you suck but it's more along the lines of let me help you so next time someone gets your pattern they can have a better understanding because that's really all this is about is showing someone what you already know. So I um, can read patterns, I just don't always use them, okay? Just doing you for the first time, I'm glad I finally had an opportunity to join. Hi, Naomi, thank you for joining me. This is fun for me. I, I, this is, I find that this, I just need to find the right sweet spot for time where I can get as many people in at the same time so we can answer as many questions as you guys have. That's the, that's been the fun part, the, the fun and challenging part of doing a live is I don't want to go into anybody else's space. It's already created, but then I also want to be able to speak to my subscribers, you know? So once I get that sweet spot, we're going to be golden. Thank you. What is the pattern? It's on the channel. Um, the pattern for this shot is on my channel, also land, and then it's also on my website. So if you want a written pattern, check out my website, and that should be linked below. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Hi, Randy. Okay, so the next question is, how do you feel when you enter a yarn store? How do you feel? When, how do y'all feel when you enter a yarn store? I'm going to say it depends on the yarn store. So if I'm going into like a Joanne's Fabric or like a, I would say like a box store, um, a Michael's, which has like yarn and kind of crafts, I feel like, I feel like, okay, let's get in and get what you need. But when I go into Hobby Lobby, and I don't know if you guys have a Hobby Lobby, I hear like, oh, like I hear music. It feels so peaceful in there and they play like an inspirational um vibe music you know what I mean it's like a Christian inspirational type of music in the store so when I'm walking around in that store the creativity starts flowing I'm ready to work um so I feel like a sense of like creativity <laughs> you know but like a Joanne's fabric or something like that it's, it doesn't create the same type of feeling because it's so much stuff in the store and it's not as peaceful. So when I go in those stores, I kind of get in, find what's on sale and out. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, for me, it's like the difference between like a Walmart and Target. It's just a different feeling. It's weird. I know. I don't know why. It just is. So I feel, I feel like trumpets play when I walk into Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Which is odd. Okay, she asked me, I'm sorry. Um, she said she would like to make her own sweater and she wants to know if I'm going to teach one, especially around the neck and the sleeves. I can do that. I can make a sweater. Um... I'm, I'm just tell you, when people are crocheting and they're trying to show you how to crochet sleeves, it's a little diff, difficult um, just because of the angling of the camera. And you have to do decreasing. So that basically means that you, you probably know, but if I'm just explaining just in case you, someone doesn't. But decreasing basically meaning you have to kind of bring it down into like a like your arm, you know, you go from bigger to smaller. So that technique of decreasing is harder to teach. So what you'll find is while you'll find crocheters that show you how to do a decrease and show you how to create um, sweaters and things like that, it may be at a faster pace because those are more um, intermediate type projects, I would say. But yeah, I can show you, 
I can show you how to do a sweater. Let's let's work on that. I'll work on that. Okay, I'll work on that. I'll write that down. I just like I said, just I get a, I get nervous when I'm trying to show you guys decreases because if you look away, you may not realize that I've skipped a stitch or I've done a decrease. So that's the only thing. It's hot. I'm in Florida, so it's hot. It's hot and humid. So I, I get you being in Texas and it being hot. She asked if I, um, if it's it's so hot in Texas. I crochet more in the in the fall. So starting like September all the way to like February, that's my crochet sweet spot. Um, I have to remember though that there are people that watch me that are, it's cold where they are. So I try to do something all year round, but I tend to crochet more during the fall and winter just because it's hot you know what i mean it's like i'd rather be outside planting in my garden i'd rather be outside doing something like that as opposed to having like a hot project like this sitting on my lap as i'm trying to crochet you know what i mean so in the in the spring and summer i crochet a lot of home projects so dishcloths i'm always making some type of dishcloth i'm always making some type of um um I'll start on blankets, you know what I mean? I, I'll get them started, but I won't get them finished until like this, the, the winter or the fall. <laughs> it's just too hot. <laughs> it's just not encouraging to be sitting outside, like, you know, slaving away with yarn. And But I love crocheting, don't get me wrong. I just much rather be gardening. That's all. That's all in, in the spring and summer. Um, Let's see. Do you have a lot of yarn, but feel like you don't have enough? Did you hear that? Do you have a lot of yarn, but feel like you don't have enough? Okay, so I have a lot of yarn and I feel like I have enough, but has that stopped me from purchasing more yarn? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the sad part about it. It's like, I know I have a lot of yarn. Like I have so much yarn, I don't even really know where to put it, but um, I just can't stop. I try not to go into yarn stores, though. I really, guys, understand, I really try not to unless I have a clear project in my mind. But um, during this whole quarantine, I started, I don't want to say that a lot because my husband's probably watching. I started ordering yarn online. So, like, I go to the actual website and I order yarn. And that's the worst because oftentimes it's just, like, you're... For, you know, if you order at least $50, you'll get free shipping. But, you know, if I go in the store, I'm not going to spend $50 for yarn like that. But I'm just going to keep reading. Okay. Do you think you're a yarnaholic? So I guess that leads to my next question. Do I think I'm a yarnaholic? I Googled what is a yarnaholic, and this is what I got. A yarnaholic can always find a place to store or hide more yarn. A yarnaholic can always find a place to store or hide more yarn. I, I'm a yarnaholic. Hi, my name's Felicia, and I'm a yarnaholic. I can always find a place to put yarn. I'm ashamed. <laughs> I'm ashamed, but I, I guess I am. I don't want to be this way. Y'all send help. I don't want to, you, you too, Helen, exactly. I don't want to be this way. I don't know who made me like this, but when you see this kind of stuff, guys, like just sitting in the store and it's like sitting here like this, you know, like looking at you and what am I supposed to do? You know, it's not my fault. It's just not. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. Um, I think this is the life of the artist. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. The investment. Yes, it's, it is an investment for my future work. I'm going to use that. I may put that on a shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you can't help it. And you know what always happens to me? I just think I'm not going to have enough. So that's really why, too, I do. I try to do some yarn giveaways. That was like my way of saying, okay, Felicia, you know, share the wealth. So if I get way too much yarn, sometimes I will give do a giveaway for it. Just because why do you? I mean, and being two in the United States, sometimes it's easier to get your hands on a yarn, especially when it goes on sale, you know? So if I can 
be a blessing to someone else and get it shipped out. The only thing that really costs me, you know, I always look at it as a fun cost. So if I've already purchased the yarn, I don't think about the cost anymore. I'm, I'm not sure has, if my husband looks at it like that. But for me, it's like, oh, I already spent that money. So if I, if I give it to someone else, I just think of it as like a blessing, you know, to someone else. Exactly. Can't leave any yarn behind. Who are we? You know what I mean? Okay. Have you ever freestyle crocheted? Yes. That's typically how I like to crochet. Um, I didn't even bring my books in here, but I have this like composition notebook and I'll just kind of write down what I did. And um, I try to do my patterns at least two to three times. I don't have any pattern testers at this time or anything like that. So I try to do my patterns um, two or three times before I will release it as my own pattern. So that's that's through the free, freestyle crochet. Okay, let's see what else we got on here. How do you feel, how do you express yourself or how do you feel when you're counting and someone interrupts me? Like if I'm, count, if I'm counting and someone interrupts me, how do I feel? Um, I feel like at this point, my family's kind of trained. I've trained my family, not even like on purpose, but they know if I'm counting, they just have a look. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm counting or um, I'll just start counting louder. And I'm, I think some people do that too. Like they'll just be like, one, two, three, four, like trying to make them understand. But like my husband, he thinks it's cute to like count a different number than me. That's a good way to get us going. But yeah, I just try to count louder. And then that way I don't have to have any feelings about it when you mess me up, you know? <laughs> so that's how I feel about that. Um, do you dream about crocheting? Not typically. If I'm making a project, um, then I will have thoughts about how to, well, wait, let me think. Okay. So if I see something and I want to create that as a project, then I may have thoughts about it, you know, going to sleep and stuff, but I don't like it doesn't take over. Do you drive and crochet? No, I don't. Um, I ride and crochet and I am a rider. Like I really feel like I should have had a chauffeur for my whole life just because I love riding. Um, so I do ride and crochet. Do you crochet at work? No, when I was working full time, I would never crochet at work. If, if I was on break, of course. Um, and then this is kind of like a job, but not really. It's still my hobby, but I'd share it with you guys in, the, in this platform. So. If you consider this my job, then yes, I, I guess I would crochet at work, but I don't typically, this is enjoyment. I enjoy doing it. I love creating and sharing. So um, I don't look at it as a job, you know? So I don't, I wouldn't say I crochet at work. Do you, do you dislike when you have a simple pattern, but it's difficult to follow because of the way it's written? Yes, absolutely. So simple pattern that's hard to follow because of the way it's written. I don't like that. But like I say, crocheters, um, pattern writers are human. So if you can take the time to let them know, like, hey, this isn't easy to read. And, and then the way you say it, I think it would help them a lot because, you know, they want to help. You know what I mean? And if you if you tell someone that the pattern is hard to read and they give you a hard time about it, then they're just not the right person for you. You know what I mean? They're not the right person to get patterns from. Hey, Pam, <laughs> how are you doing? So yeah, I um, I do dislike it, but like I say, we're all human. So let's try to help each other. And if you spent money for something, ask them, like how can show them or tell them how it could have been easier for you. That way they don't. Now, if it's a free pattern, then you can give feedback, but understand it was a free pattern. You know what I mean? So don't like go too hard on them, but Feedback is always nice. How many unfinished projects do you have? That's called UFO. How many unfinished projects do I have or outfits do I have? I have three, maybe four, four. Hey, Sharon, we're not talking about money or anything. I'm just kind of giving um, my, giving some I'm doing a crochet tag. I found a crochet tag online and I'm kind of giving you guys what I found. I thought it was a neat tag and people were kind of telling them, telling about themselves from a crochet perspective. And so that's just what I'm doing. I'm kind of like answering some of these questions. So if you have any questions, Sharon, just leave them, you know, let them, let me know and I'll answer those too. Um, so I have three probably unfinished projects or unfinished outfits. This one here, I, I brought it out. You guys look at this. Siri has.
during my conversation. Whew, I tell you what, Siri. Okay. So look, so this is one that I've been working on. This is a cardigan. And the problem with this one is I, would, I wanted to show this. I wanted to share this with you on YouTube, how to create it. But you remember how I told you earlier, like something starts off as something and then I may change it to something else. So this is an example of that. It's a really nice cardigan and it turned out really nice overall. I'm not finished with it. I still have to sew on my uh, pockets and um, just some fine tuning to it. But I can't teach because... For starters, this type of yarn is kind of hard to teach on because it's really, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's kind of fluffy. So I can't, um, and it's hard for me to show how to create this, but it's a project that I've been working on for a while, mainly just because it's, I get distracted easily. <laughs> and then I'm working on another green cardigan that you guys saw the last live. And I'm working on, I'm always working on some type of socks or footies, you know what I mean? To where I just finished fingerless gloves. So I'll have the video out on the fingerless gloves this week. And then I finished some thing, like some mitts, mittens, which I'll have a pattern out for that this week as well. Um, so yeah. Do you travel with your hook and yarn? Absolutely. <laughs> I would, you know what? It would be crazy. I, I travel, which I'll talk about later, like what's in my crochet bag or what's in my bag type of thing. But I travel with my Kindle, my hook, my yarn. And, um, and then, you know, like that's pretty much it as far as like hobby things that I do. So my Kindle with some Air AirPods, and my hook and yarn. But like if I'm going on a road trip, and you guys do you do this, when I go on a road trip, I tend to like, um, I pack like four projects. Like I pack in like three different yarns. <laughs> just like, like I feel like all of a sudden now that I'm going in the car and I'm driving, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish every project I ever started, which is crazy to me. So when I go traveling, I tend to have the most, um, I take the most projects with me, which is nuts because I may, I may touch one, but I always pack like overpack, you know? <laughs> hey, good morning, Ethel. How are you? Good morning. Mm. So yeah, I, I over, I over, overpack stuff. Okay. So I got a couple more. What is your favorite thing about Crocheting. My favorite thing about what's your favorite? What's Shara's favorite thing about crocheting? Like, what do you enjoy doing uh, with crocheting? My favorite thing about crocheting is the finished product. You know what I mean? Like, I love knowing that I can take a skein of yarn, a hook, and thank you so much. I love taking a yarn and some hook and creating something like I feel like that is the absolute need you know what gets me though too is like once people start knowing that you can crochet they're like can you you know you know feeling like can you make you know what I mean and that's the funniest thing to me because um they don't realize how how much a handmade project like crocheting can cost in terms of not just the cost of yarn, but like the time that you put into it. Um, yeah, the instant gratification. That's why I like smaller projects, Pam. Like I love doing things that are like, dishcloths are like the ultimate because I can whip those out in no time. And I, I absolutely love them. Like if you have never used a crochet dishcloth, I would suggest if you're a crocheter to find you a tutorial. I have one on my channel, but if you not can't follow mine, find a tutorial and do those. Because aside from the fact that they, they're really cool, they really work with washing your dishes. Like it's weird that I could do like a testimonial for a dishcloth, but I don't know why everyone doesn't do it. Um Ear warmers. Oh, yeah. Ear warmers are good, too. That's another quick one. Yeah. Can you make me a mask? I get that. I get that. My brother, listen, he wants me to make him a mask, but he wants it to have, like, a beard. And I'm 
not saying I won't do it, but it's just he. I don't think you realize how long it's going to take me to like put each individual strand. I'm not going to say I'm not doing it, guys. I've, I've already got the mask completed. I just need to go and do the beard part, but it's just funny. It does. It's relaxing. It is relaxing. I to, like, okay, for instance, like this. So this blanket, I, I want to have this done by a certain period of time. So I'll figure out how many rows it makes, you know, um, like how many rows makes a certain number of inches. And then I like, I don't, I just do a whole math project in my head trying to figure out how many rows I have to do each night to get the blanket complete. And um, so that part of it is like fun because I'm trying to challenge myself to get complete. But if I'm not doing something like that, just sitting around crocheting, that's so relaxing. That's so relaxing. Yeah. Pam, I want to learn how to knit. I've really, I tried knitting before, but I made one glove. <laughs> I made one glove and my family teases me to this day because I only got through one glove, but it was so pretty. It was pretty. Hi, Yarn Over Hook. Hello. Did you really? Was it, Pam, now was the lip tutorial, was it okay? Was it easy to follow? I'm gonna make some um, more lips for, um, you know like how you make cozies for drinks? I'm gonna put some lips on that. I think it'd be cute. Yeah, I, Helen, I love making, sharing and giving too. I do too. Cool, thank you. Cause I, that's, you know, that's one thing when you do a pattern, you're trying to get the angles, you know, when you're trying to get the angles correct and when you're doing a little crochet hook, it's harder to see, you know, as well. I have never heard of that type of yarn. Let me, let me Google it real quick. I don't think I've ever heard of that. And if I have, I've seen it, but maybe didn't know that was the name of it. Hold on. Okay, while I'm looking that up, um, what do you, pip squeak yarn. I've never used it. Uh-oh. All right, I think my connection froze, guys. Did my, did my connection freeze? Yeah. Am I still frozen? It, it, yes. Are you on the Wi-Fi? Really? It's got full bars. You don't even have. Is it Zaycourt? Oh. No. Zaycourt means I'm on the call. Zay gonna call for me on call. Oh. Okay, so it's good now. I'm sorry, I think I froze. Everyone is on, but I, this is just a sign. I've been talking to on. I know what that is. Okay. So my favorite when I'm not crocheting is I'm sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize it. Okay, so I'm telling you everything happened. So I've been talking. I didn't even realize the time. Okay, so gardening, cleaning, it's not like my favorite thing to do, but that's what I'm doing when I'm not crocheting. I'm either gardening, I'm cleaning, or I'm cooking something. So typical, that is what I'm doing when I'm crocheting. So I'm sorry I froze. I hope I didn't, guys, I hope I didn't freeze on some crazy looking picture. <laughs> it's like undoubtedly every time someone freezes, their mouth is like, you know? <laughs> Can you hear loud and clear? Okay, cool. <laughs> I hate that when things freeze. And like on my end, I can't see anything. It just freezes. So I might be even delayed just trying to get back into it. But yeah, that, so those are my favorite things to do. If I'm not cooking, if I'm not cleaning or um, gardening, then I'm usually reading a book and crocheting. And I love um, audible books. Well, I don't love audible books, but I like audible books when I'm crocheting. So it kind of gives me both, best of both worlds. I can put on my audiobook and I can crochet at the same time. And that's heaven for me or listening to some music, you know? So that's pretty much it. Did you guys have like any questions that I didn't cover? There was 25 of these questions. Um, Maybe I can leave them. Well, if you're interested in doing this, just let me know. Send me, um, if you haven't, if you have a channel and you want to do the crochet tag, 
tag, then let me know and I'll send you the questions. There's um, 25, well, there's 23, but I added two of my own. Um, and then I can um, send them to you and you can answer them. You know what I mean? Do you do any advanced technique projects or basic variation? Yes. Let's switch type of person. Please roll. I don't, I don't really, I don't focus on anything advanced techniques. I feel like there are a lot of crocheters out there that do a really good job. And when I think of advanced, I'm thinking about like different, a whole lot of different garments, the lace, the lacier type of yarn, smaller crochet hooks. That's kind of how I look at advanced. Um, I like to get beginners from the initial project from like crocheting a scarf or a blanket to maybe like the first cardigan or their first pair of socks. So I wouldn't say I'm an advanced technique person because I don't consider myself an advanced crocheter. You know, I'm still in awe of a lot of people's work. You know what I mean? I see people and I'm like, how do they, how do they do all of that intricate design, you know? So because of that, I don't teach it. I don't really see myself like that. You know what I mean? I can make nice things, but I don't really, you know, find that to be my thing. And I don't want to teach anything that, you know, someone can't catch on. You know what I mean? That's my whole goal. So, um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of great creators out there, though, that really take you from where I'm going to leave you to that next level. You know what I mean? So I focus on a lot of the beginner stitches. Um, I think like the treble, the, you know, single double, half double, treble like that. And then I kind of leave everything else to the other um, great fiber arts. Pam, yeah, you, yeah, you do. Yes, you have a channel. She does, Pam, Pam Crochet in Knit Corner, she has so many cool podcast videos, like amazing. And I love to put her on. If I'm not doing like, gardening and things like that outside. I love to put on podcasts and listen to what other crocheters have to say. Um, so if you're looking for a good, fun podcast, it just has good examples of things she likes. She does a lot of, um, where she'll find someone's pattern and she can work the project and you can see like the finish. She's really good. Her channel's really nice. So does anybody else have a crochet channel here on YouTube that we can take a peek at? No. So yeah, I enjoyed. Um, yeah, you should. <laughs> you're gonna have to. I'm telling you, some this space is so full of creativity. Like so many people have so many cool things that they're doing. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna have to gonna have to follow her now. <laughs> um. So yeah, I guess. Um. <laughs> I guess, I mean, that's really much, that's it. I am going, like I said, I wanted to tell you guys I was going to do the unnecessary necessaries. I'm still going to do that. And that might be a few videos because there's a lot of crochet gadgets out there that I don't necessarily think are gadgets, but they aren't necessary for the very, very beginning, you know, crocheter. You really just need a, a nice hook and um, yarn to get started. But there are some really cool, helpful things out there. So I do want to talk about that. I'm waiting for the furl hook to come. Um, so I hope that, I think it was Oak Knots that recommended that. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. If you have any questions, I've talked much longer than I anticipated. Like initially when I first did, I was going to do lives. I was like, oh, 20 minutes. And then that, the next one I did was like 40. And here we are 55 minutes in, but there was technical difficulties. So <laughs> that's not all the way my fault. But yeah, so guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I do see them even after the live is over. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down there. I will try to put everything that I discussed in terms of like what I like that you can actually get. I'll leave that in my description box down below. Um, again, I have like over a hundred videos on my channel. So if you're looking for something and you're like on a laptop, you can actually search what you're looking for once you get to someone's channel. Um, you just go to the channel page and there's like a search bar. And if you're like looking for a hat, you can type in hat and it'll give you everything that they have on hats. So 
start there. You know what I mean? If you like my teaching style, I do have a lot of tutorials out there, but there's a mixture too. So keep that in mind. I have plant life too. So if plants interest you at all, I do discuss some plants. I do need, I am going to be putting up my, um, house plant tour. So if you're interested in how many plants I have and how I have them kind of laid out in my home, I try to put that out every year. Just been kind of slow at doing it. Um, Lion's, brain, Lion's brain is becoming my favorite yarn too. And I don't, I don't want to say that like in, in, <laughs> in like dismissing someone else, but they really have good yarn. They really have good yarn. They really do. Like I'm looking at my bed over here with some of the yarns on it and Here's another, here's another one, you know. First YouTuber that fell off. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So I'm thankful that you still see me. I've, you know, it's so many creatives on YouTube now that you get, you get buried. And because I'm not a consistent content creator and that's my fault. Like I, I like to share things that I think would be worthwhile, but I realize for YouTube, you have to share often. So I'm going to have to become more comfortable with just sharing, you know, random things so that you guys don't miss me. Cause sometimes if you don't share a lot, you'll just get buried in the algorithm of YouTube. So I'm trying to find a way to make sure that my people still see me, you know, cause I do enjoy crocheting and I do enjoy showing you guys what I crochet. So thank you, Carol. See Carol. <laughs> thank you so yeah um i will be putting out that so if you're interested in like plants and stuff i'll put out a video on my house plant tour and then coming up within the next couple of weeks i have to, i'll be announcing the winner for the um two skeins of that um roving yarn i'll do that probably today or tomorrow and then um i have fingerless gloves that will be going up and then I have fingerless gloves with a mitten, like a cover over them. That will also be coming out. I'm in the editing stages of that. Um, I have two yarn reviews, maybe three. And um, yeah, so, and, and then of course next week I'll be doing my live. Okay, so I have a few things coming. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. The notification bell is helpful only because in my case, I don't, I'm not as consistent and there's always something different. So if you want to hit the notification bell, that's perfect because you'll be able to see when I upload. But um, that's completely up to you all. Just make sure you're subscribed so that you will get, um, you'll see when I put videos out underneath the people that you're subscribed to. So that's it, guys. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. And like I say, I'm still working out the tweaks to when it's going to be a perfect time for these lives. But for right now, we're going to stick with this time frame, and then I may add another one on Sunday. That's the goal. So anyway, guys, I hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and I'll see you next Tuesday on my next slide. Bye. Yes. <laughs>